Exactly right, Tom. This wallet case, this man that we know came from South Australia. Let's go. Sorry, William we're going to have to go to Jodie McKay now. Julie, we'll come back to you. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming along. Uh, today I'm standing down as the leader of the Labor Party in New South Wales. And I have to say I do this with a very heavy heart. I do this even though I have the support of my caucus and our wonderful party members. No one has asked me to stand aside. In fact, colleagues have asked me to stay. If a ballot were held today, I can tell you I would win that ballot. I have always tried to build consensus within our party, but it's clear that although I was elected leader in a democratic ballot, there are those within our party who've never accepted the outcome of that process. For me, leadership must always be about the institution and also about how you respond to its successes and also its difficulties. Leadership is also about knowing when you step up and also when you step down. Over the last two years, I believe I have worked hard to reshape Labor's message in preparation for 2023. We have had, as you all know, some bumps and bruises along the way, but I do want my successor to continue this reform to ensure we continue to speak and also have relevance to the broader population because this is actually the true Labor way. It's a party of mainstream that speaks up for and defends the interests of everyday citizens. But success does require patience, it requires forgiveness, and it requires constant dialogue with the community as well as ourselves. I want to apologise to those who wished I had stayed. But this is the only way that I know I can unite our party. I have spent the last six days reflecting on how to achieve unity. And I have decided that this offers the party the best opportunity to heal and to move forward. But there also has to be a future where there is no destabilising of the party's leader from within. While the leadership of the Labor Party may move to a ballot, there must be an acknowledgement that at the end of that process, when the new leader is determined, that we unite as a party. This time, we must all accept the outcome. We must all support the new leader. And we have to work to end government in 2023 because New South Wales deserves no less. I want to thank my incredible staff who've supported me and encouraged me, and I am so indebted to them. I am also very much looking forward to spending time with my husband because he told me this morning that he only believes in four things. He believes in Labor, the church, Beethoven and me. And he asked that I put that in, into the speech. So I am also very much looking forward to spending some more time in my electorate of Strathfield and continuing to proudly serve my community. So can I thank you all so very much. Um, and uh, I am going to spend some time at our farm in Gloucester, and then uh, you will see me back in Parliament uh, ready and raring to go. So thanks, everyone. Pretty short and sharp from Jodie McKay there, defiant that she wasn't asked to go, people asked her to stay, and she would have won a ballot, but because no uh, certain people in her party never accepted her leadership for the good of the party and emotional at times she had to go, Departing as New South Wales Labor leader after two years in the role, her leadership has been under question, of course, all week. This was after the bruising by-election in the Upper Hunter. The party suffered a 7% primary vote swing against it, despite New South Liberal Party having some scandals. And yes, COVID always helps, so that incumbency was a factor, but people expected more from Labor. Where to from here for Labor ahead of New South Wales' 2023 state election? Cogra MP Chris Minns has now all but locked up the role, although he is yet to officially put his name forward at this stage. Chris Minns resigned as Shadow Transport Minister earlier this week after a dirt file was circulated against him that was in a failed bid by Jody McKay's allies to undermine his aspirations. She herself denied any knowledge of that. Chris Minns previously ran for the leadership against Jody McKay in 2019. He lost the ballot of both rank-and-file members and caucus members. 
40% to McKay's 60%. So remember, this is the same as what happens federally. Caucus get to vote, but also ordinary members around the state. This time around, it appears likely he won't need to contest the ballot whatsoever. So that's the key difference. That's because Ryan Park, who was rumoured to be interested in contesting, has instead thrown support behind Mr Minns in the interest of party unity. New South Wales Labor head office has asked Ryan Park not to run, so it very much appears Chris Minns will emerge as leader. We'll see what happens. We're standing by to bring you a Chris Minns up this afternoon. That'll be live for you here on Sky News when it happens. Uh, keeping in mind, of course, if they have an anointed leader, no one else contests. You don't need that contest. It's not um, free to run, of course, and it takes some time, can take months. So whilst that reform brought in was supposed to give party members a say, it's not always the party's wishes that's the case. We'll keep you updated through the afternoon. Let's move back to Victoria, though. As we mentioned, four new cases, day one of the seven-day circuit.